that sounds like shit. Yeah, that won't work. Well, hey, everybody. Tom, Motoresto LLC, Braden, Florida. What we have here today is an 09 VTX 1300, and she's a little sick. So let's see if we can make her well. Let's get right to it. All right, so the deal with this is, um, this is a referral job from my buddy down the road does Harleys. This gentleman that owns this has some Harleys and uh, you know he wanted me to work on this because that's something my buddy down the road doesn't do is the um, Japanese bikes. And of course I do, as you well know. So I just picked this up. The objective here is just to make it run right because I think he wants to sell it. Um, I suspect there's car problems with it. He said it's happened before. He said that uh, his father or somebody else was into the carb, uh, I don't know, a couple of years ago and cleaned it out and got it running. And now it's happened again. So I went over some options with him and I said, what do you really want to do with this? Because, you know, I gave him an estimate based on how to fix it right. And that means, you know, going into it and actually figuring out why the carburetor is getting gooed up. There's probably some junk in it. My um, suspicions would be the fuel cock is probably bad as far as that filter stack that goes on the top of it and it's letting some shit through from inside the tank. Uh, he doesn't want to go into it that deep. Uh, he's thinking about selling it. So really all this is going to be is we're going to pull this cover off, pull the uh, carburetor out, and we're going to clean it real quick, give it an eval, reset the float height, and then put it back in and see if that doesn't solve it. There's oodles of videos on YouTube already on how to get the carb out of this thing, so I'm not going to bore you with that part. So I'm going to drop screws and then uh, get this out. You know, we'll... Uh, Go over it briefly, but uh, basically we're just going to take it apart. And the main uh, main thing here is to get at the carburetor. These are just 5 mil uh, hex, or Allen I should say, bolts, cap bolts really, if you really want to get te technical about it. Now I have never actually worked on a VTX like this before, many of you twins, but not a VTX. And this has uh, one carburetor for two cylinders. So it has a carburetor behind that's an intake manifold and that uh, bifurcates out. There's a word for the day uh, to each cylinder. And there's our insides, or at least part of the insides. There is a, a 10 mil bolt down here and three JIS uh, screws. A little bit of oil, but that is most likely from the, uh, that's the crankcase ventilation coming back up into the air box. So I'm not too worried about that. He mentioned that's a nice new air filter. He said he did a tune up on it recently. And uh, that was uh, about the time I think he was starting to have problems, so uh, it didn't obviously solve it. Hence, it's here. I really would rather do this job differently, but unfortunately, it is what it is. These uh, little plastic standoffs here that wrap around these screws are actually retainers. They're like captured screws, which is kind of nice. So uh, they don't necessarily fall directly back out when you... Oh, that one's... Did I loosen that one up already? I don't think I did. Maybe I did. Yeah, so basically, uh, basically, that's what those are for, which is kind of nice. Well, uh -oh. Aha. Yeah, that's one of those uh, well-nut type deals, so the rubber expansion well-nuts. So it's just spinning on that. Because somebody's been in this before, it was not put back properly, so we'll have to fix that. Yeah, it doesn't look good. See, here's the, here's the side of it that I'm talking about right back here. You see that? So right in there is that is that bolt coming through and there's actually i'll show you when we take it off there's actually a rubber piece back in here which is one of those expanding deals and then we'll just pop those hoses off when you're working around these things be careful what you're using because you start um, prying that stuff even if it's a kind of a lightweight plastic part it slips off and then you snap smack it against one of these um, cylinder fins it doesn't take too much to snap one of those so be careful it's this right here it's a like i said it's an expansion uh, nut essentially that goes inside that hole and then expands out and there's a usually a brass threaded internal area that's m6 uh, so we'll see if we can fix that for them all right so the service data says to uh, we got to take the choke off the other side essentially it's just a choke um, plunger which just gets held in a bracket with a plastic nut so we'll pop that off off camera i'll do that here separately and then um, we're going to undo the band clamp, of course, around the carburetor, carburetor. And we'll pull that back a little bit, and then we'll get at these throttle cables and disconnect those. Pretty simple, pretty standard stuff as far as that goes. And we'll get the carburetor off, take a look at it. 
Oh, one thing first, what you want to do on these, this particular carb has an accelerator pump, and that's the little nipple deal you see sticking up right there. I just wanted to use the word nipple in a video at least once. So it's right there. So what we want to do is we want to test that. And you see it's squirting. So we know that's good. We're not going to mess with that. We're going to get our clean coffee cup going here and drain the contents of the carburetor into the coffee cup and take a look at what's in there. Makes you want to go pee. It seemed like a whole lot of fuel in that carburetor for for the size of it, which could be part of the problem as well, the float level's off. We've discussed that in other videos, but you can see it looks all right, but there's a couple of little specks down in there. This was a perfectly clean coffee cup. There's no water in it, of course, but there is definitely some specks in it that weren't in this cup. You see all that crap down in there to the right side? So I suspect that's probably what's happening with this thing, is what I said before. Now what I'm also going to do here is I'm going to take an old sweatshirt because it's large enough, and I'm going to drape it in here between the fins carburetor and just protect those. Just don't want to take any chances here. All right, there's two cooling lines that attach to this carburetor. And what they do is essentially circulate hot water and keep the temperature of the carburetor same as the engine. It's like a, uh, you know, to warm it up as fast as the engine warms up. Um, or, you know, to cool it down as well, because remember it is between the hot jugs. So the water that goes through is going to tend to keep that carburetor at a uh, nominal level as far as temperature goes. Uh, I'd like to get those off. There are certainly ways you can just pop the float bowl off, check everything, but I can't do an accurate float level check without taking it off and turning it upside down. Plus, I want to inspect some other stuff. So I'm going to rig up some plugs so I can shove in those holes so we don't lose a lot of coolant and the holes of the hoses, I mean. And then we'll, um, we'll get those off. All right, this thing decided to turn off for some reason, so I think I lost some stuff. So let me just uh, review. I haven't gone that far anyway. I got it off, obviously. I did pull the uh, choke plunger out, or the enricher plunger out, and there was a little bit of crud at the very end of the plunger where it goes down into the uh, carb body there, into that circuit. So that is indicative, of course, that there's some more junk in there. I had one trouble here with a screw. You can see a screw has been butchered by somebody, and they used a, probably a regular... Uh, you know, hacksaw to to <laughs> to make a slot into. I finally did get that out. Uh, I'm going to replace all those screws. What you have to do now is, uh, which I actually forgot at first, is uh, this is the accelerator pump on the bottom of the of the uh, carburetor. Uh, you saw. I, I hope I got that footage that we tested that before. Um, this linkage is essentially all part of the float bowl. We have to disengage it from the actual throttle uh, assembly, the rotating parts, the spinny parts. So what we're going to do here is just take this little cotter pin out and we'll get that um, done. There we go. Well, it actually didn't too, too bad. Hmm. Really, it isn't. But there is a little bit down the bottom there. You see, really, you know, what all it takes to clog up these pilot circuits is a little piece of junk just like that. You see that little piece of crap in there. It's all it takes. Of course, we have our float, float valve and our float needle. We're going to inspect those too, but there doesn't appear to be a problem with it. We'll go ahead and pressure test this. We don't need the pressure tester for it. We'll just blow on it and make sure it is sealing in the upside down position here. And if that's the case, we're good. Uh, if it was an inline four or multiple carbs, I would use the pressure test rig. And I have a video on that if you haven't seen it already. This is your main jet. This is your emulsion tube. Down below that is actually the uh, needle jet for the slide can't really see it. It's kind of hard to get at right in here, but it's the one that uh, penetrates up through the carburetor. And so what we want to do essentially right now is take the uh, main jet out. Let's take a quick look at it. Yeah, it's a big ass jet. <laughs> I think it's a one something. I'm sure our problem is lies in the uh, slow jet, which is right here. That would be your slow jet. And then, or your pilot jet, whatever you want to call it. And this is a jet as well, but it's fixed. It's the um, enricher circuit. So the enricher picks up a fuel from this when you pull that choke plunger out, changes the vacuum dynamics inside the carb to allow fuel to be drawn up through this circuit to enrich in the circuit when it's cold, or enrich in the mixture rather when it's cold. So we're not going to deal with that except blow it out. That's why I took the plunger out of the uh, actual carb for the enricher. I want to blow that circuit out.
according to the service data, it's supposed to be a 50, 5, 0, 55, whatever. I don't know. I have to look it up. Maybe, maybe it's this, it's, you know, 50, 55, 220, 221, whatever works. This appears to be the appropriate jet size for it, but let's go ahead and take a look down inside with a flashlight. Now, that's a pretty big jet for a Cahin because Cahin actually uses the uh, size as the number as opposed to like Mukini that uses the flow. So um, that's a pretty big jet. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold it up here and you can see it is open but it may not be open enough or there may be some other problems going on with this. So right now not, I don't really see a big smoking gun as far as anything plugged. You know this has been taken apart before and I'm thinking maybe the float height is off and that would definitely give us a problem with uh, with it running uh, both uh, in a, you know certainly in the for the slow circuit because you know the f the fuel has to be up high enough uh, to uh, be drawn up in there and it has to have a certain amount of level to make it easier for it to draw up there in other words if it's just barely covering this area um, it's it's going to be a harder time getting the fuel to come up there under the certain va vacuum dynamics in there than it would be if it's up a little bit higher so that all plays a big role don't let anybody tell you that the um, that the flow level uh, doesn't really play that critical of a role on, on either circuit, fl the slow or high. It absolutely does. You got to be spot on with these things. Now, this um, slow screw, we're going to take this out as well. This is one of these D shape um, screws. I have the tool for that. And we're going to count the number of turns it's in first, and then we'll take it out, and then we'll just keep that in mind. But I have the service date on that. I forgot what it said, but we'll go look that up again when we put it back in. And the reason why I'm taking all this stuff out is everything is connected. Everything is linked. This is linked to other, other parts of the enricher circuit. This is linked to other parts of the main circuit, in particular like uh, air, air jets on, on the intake side of the car. And the, the slow jet is linked to the pilot screw or the slow screw, and that's linked to other parts of the, uh, of the carburetor, including some uh, intake vacuum you know, ports and so forth that sometimes these have and sometimes they do not it depends on the carb so all of this stuff is related you can't just take a jet out and clean the jet put it back in and expect this thing to be right it all has to be shotgunned as far as the circuits go because if you don't do that you may have something of a blockage inside of a circuit that um, you don't know about until you clean it so that's what we're going to do let me get this out um, then we'll do the screw and we'll start blowing it out put them back together we'll check the float We'll just use the little ball, on the detent ball on the side of it as a marker. It'll turn, oh wow. Oh wow. Why is that so tight? Hmm. Hmm. Why is the hell is going on? It's almost like it's all the way in. I bet you this was maladjusted. See, this is, these get a little corroded too. That's why these are a little bit risky. You just have to be careful with them. You can lubricate these, but it wasn't that tight. So when we blow this all out, clean this off as well. This would be the pilot screw. Inside here, there's going to be a flat washer, a tiny, tiny flat washer, and a tiny O-ring. I generally have these O-rings in stock, so I'll replace that because you don't want a vacuum leak around your fuel or pilot screw. This is Some guys are calling them air screws. They're not air screws. They're actually fuel mixture screws they adjust the fuel in relationship to the air instead of the air in relationship to the fuel and so uh we don't want a vacuum leak there this is the highest vacuum point of the carburetor right where it goes into the manifold in this case so uh, basically we want to make sure that's nice and clean and it's also seated on that rubber pretty well so i generally just take a little piece of wire and bend the end of it i'll show you what i mean and we'll pull those two things out and take a look at them i'm you know i'm sure i'm going to replace the o-ring i like i said i generally have those I am thinking, folks, that, whoops, I'm thinking that my little piece of wire just shot out. Where was I? I am thinking that the fuel screw setting was absolutely wrong. And this is all, gu this is all gunky. Look at it. Whoops. Here's your little washer. I'm going to tip my finger there. All right, and underneath this is a uh, O-ring. And uh, they're kind of fused together right now, but it doesn't really matter. Here they go. Yeah, threads are okay, but if that was really hard to come out, like when I first tried it, I immediately stop, put some penetrating oil on it, start working it back and forth. Um, this certainly had the potential to drag the threads with it, but it did not. So it, was, it wasn't that hard. Yeah, I'm looking at all the threads. They look fine. Should be just fine. It'll be fine. I, I wish I could have figured out what it was uh, set at, but I'm thinking that this is part of the problem as well. 
uh, pilot screw setting and probably float level as well, which we'll get to right now. Some float pins like this are pressed in. These are not. If they are, you just gotta kind of guess. You don't want to necessarily drive them through, but sometimes you have to with a little drift. Just be careful not to break one of the standoffs. Then you're screwed. The car body is scrap. All right, so here's your float valve or the float needle, which may or may not be good. I think it is. I mean, it does have a little indentation in it, a little impression. I'm sorry, ma'am, I don't do impressions. We'll have to check it. We'll have to see. Before we button it up, we'll test the float to uh, make sure that it is floating. Yeah. Now, what was I going to do? I was going to take this out and make sure that we got... I'm sure this emulsion is going to be fine. When you take this out of a carb body, this is emulsion tube with the little holes, and I can tell right now it's really clean. When you take that out, some carbs, that uh, needle jet is not pressed in, so it'll come out from the inside. You reach in and give it a push, it'll pop out and come out this standoff. All right, if you don't do that and you start cleaning the car, you can easily lose it. So I'm just mentioning that. I'm not going to take it down or tear it down to that level in this video or in this job for that matter. The float seat is good. Float needle seat looks really nice. So I'm not going to even bother trying to even polish that or anything. It looks good. So let's um, go ahead and just start. I'm going to go ahead and do this off camera. You don't need to see this. I'm going to shoot some brake clean through, do some uh, blowing out with the, uh, with the air gun. And then uh, we'll get this ready to uh, start putting it back together. Then we'll check the float height and see how it works. New washer, new O-ring. I generally use a little bit of silicone grease on these to make them seat. I cleaned everything. Use them on the threads of the actual screw itself. Go backwards until I can feel it want to drop into a thread. No chance of cross-threading it then. All right, good. Now we're seated. I'm going to go one, two, I'm going to start at three. I don't. I haven't looked it up yet, but I'm just going to put it at three turns right now. That way I know where it's at and I can always adjust it from there. So the fuel screw is, the full screw is done. Uh, we'll go ahead and put the jets back in after we make sure they're, double make sure they're clean and the emulsion. <clears throat> tight but not too tight. Good. You can snap those ends of the jet off, the slot parts, real easy. So don't uh, go all He-Man on it. You don't need to. Okay, let me go look up the float height and the um, uh, this guy. What is that called again? Yeah, the fuel screw turnouts. Hang on. Fuel screw is supposed to be two and a half. Um, I'm going to go two and three quarter on it. And the float height is 18 mils or 730 bananas, 0 0.730 if you're an Imperial. And remember, this is generally done, almost always exclusively done, whoops, with the clean calipers, with the float just touching the float valve. So you see how it kind of bounces right there? That's where we want to check it. Unfortunately, it's not adjustable. <laughs> I just noticed that. You saw that before I did. That is a non-adjustable float, so it is what it is. Uh, I thought at first it might be adjustable. I didn't pay attention to it when I took it out. So it's, I guess it's going to be close enough, won't it? But that's pretty much where it's at. I'm going to leave it, obviously. I have no choice. Doy. That's all right. That's okay. I don't mind making mistakes on video. I make mistakes so you don't have to. All right, so we know we're at three. Let's go to two and three quarter, which is right there. Clean the float bowl out, which I will do here in a moment. And uh, we'll kind of wipe this area off. We don't want to hit that any real solvent or anything in case it swells it up. And just, uh, and we'll get her, get her, get her done, get her done, get her put back together. Honda puts these in, or Kayan, I should say, puts these in, these float bowl gaskets with uh, this goo. You can see a little bit of it there. It's kind of red. It's like an adhesive. So if you have to change the float bowl gasket, you're, you're going to spend a considerable amount of time getting that out of there. I recommend using plastic tools or something that's not going to necessarily gouge it, but sometimes you have to do what you got to do. What holds that pin in essentially is the features of the float bowl body itself. It can't go left or right very far. In case you're wondering. I'm going to go ahead and do a quick check of the diaphragm just to make sure. That looks fine. I'm not going to take it out. I just want to take a look at it. It doesn't seem to have any holes. It's folded over properly. It's got the little creases and tufts in it, you know. 
And uh, this is where the needle will get seated in there. I'm not going to worry about that either. I just wanted to kind of give it a quick check. Well, that looks good. All right, I'm going to get this back in and we'll, I think uh, we'll just pick this back up when I get it back installed and get ready to start start it up. We'll take, we'll check it out together. How's that sound? We'll check it out together. Carburetor's back in. I just want to show you one thing. I haven't started it yet, of course. The band clamps. See them back there? There's two band clamps. There's one that will clamp. It's called an insulator, okay? That's a carb holder. Okay, that this one that I'm looking at that's more closer to the carb is the one for the carb, of course. One back behind it is the one that attaches to the manifold. Okay, that was loose. I mean, really loose, like backed way, way off. So you got to check all that because most likely that was helping to introduce a vacuum leak. Remember, that's where your highest vacuum is going to be, right in there, up to the carburetor. So probably part of the problem as well, especially in an idle. That's really when your vacuum is the highest, of course. And so uh, hopefully that helps straighten out this problem as well. I bet you that's part of it. All right, let's give her a shot. We've got it all back together as far as essentially where it came in at. Uh, I don't like that backfiring, but you gotta see this. This is pretty interesting. It's the first time I've ever seen this. There's a hole in the exhaust pipe on the side. How in the hell does that happen? Yeah, but uh, you know, I think the popping is probably, I bet you that air cut valve is not operating properly. Um, I did test it. All I can really do is test the diaphragm action of it. But on the inside there, there's uh, probably two ports with O-rings that seat that. And if that's not, seated properly or it's got a little leak around it that'll do that the right way to do it would have been taking the whole car apart and replacing everything and put it back together but unfortunately that wasn't authorized in this repair <laughs> So that's it, job done. Main problems I found was, yes, some dirt in the car, but also some vacuum leaks. You saw an earlier clip that band clamp on the uh, manifold side of the carb isolator, definitely loose. I would consider that a definite possibility of vacuum leak. Also had a problem with the fuel cock on the vacuum side of it. It's a little bit too much to get into right now. Next time I do a video on fuel cocks and um, the fuel delivery systems and the vacuum actuated ones, I'll cover it then. But right now this video is long enough, so I just want to tell you that uh, the vacuum leaks in concert with some dirt in the carburetor were the main culprits in this problem. Uh, basically, I think that when they went into this before, things weren't tightened up and put back together properly. And so this pro thing probably hadn't been running very well since then. Ran, but, you know, it gradually got worse as perhaps the vacuum leaks got worse. So anyway, yeah, we're done. I'm going to finish up the labor ticket and uh, tally it out or total it out and get in touch with the customer and see what he wants to pick it up. So I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. Uh, and if you did, uh, please consider subscribing. Uh, ring the bell. You get notified when I put another video up like this. Like the video. That helps our analytics. And until next time, as always, remember, 
Don't just repair, restore. Catch you on the next video.